with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, this is The Lone Ranger. The other day I was watching a cowboy trying to break an outlaw horse. That bronc was plenty mean and the cowboy was having a tough time trying to stick in the saddle. So a couple of the boys around the corral started to serenade the cowboy like this. Have you tried Wheaties? They're whole wheat with all of the bran. Won't you try Wheaties? For wheat is the best food of man. Well, the cowboy tamed the horse, just like man tamed the West with the help of wheat. It was the vast western prairies that attracted the white man, land on which to grow wheat to be made into flour, to give man the energy it takes to live in a frontier country. Today, you can get that same frontier wheat energy, and here's how. Keep on eating your wheat, and you'll be do 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 an okay. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll still The valley town of Fairview in the heart of Colorado's gold mining area was stifling hot at high noon. People remained indoors as much as possible, and in the sheriff's office, a deputy sat half asleep until Sheriff Matt Neely entered. Hey. Uh -huh. What? What turnation? Speak up. I've got a letter from the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Great Scott, I didn't know you knew him, Sheriff. I don't. But he says a crook by the name of Dial Durkin plans to clean out the bank on the 15th of this month. Dial Durkin? I never heard of him. The Lone Ranger sent this handbill with a letter. It tells all about Dial Durkin. Well, yeah, all we got to do is watch for him, and if he comes here, arrest him and turn him over to your friend Marshal Green in Cheyenne. Well, that's what I plan to do. But in the meantime, I'm going to ride to Cheyenne, have a talk with Jim Green. Meanwhile, don't say anything about this to Banker Carmody. You ought to know about it, Chair. Plenty of time to tell him after I get back from Cheyenne. A few days after receiving the letter of warning, Sheriff Matt Neely visited his friend, Marshal Green, in Cheyenne. After welcoming the sheriff, the marshal read the letter carefully, then said... I tell you, Matt, there's no accounting for the way the Lone Ranger learned things like this. You know him, don't you, Marshal? Well, I've talked to him a few times. In fact, he was here in Cheyenne last week. He came to my house late at night to ask if I knew what kind of cigars Dial Durkin smokes. Why? Well, he and Tondo had been following the trail for some time. And they'd picked up several uh, half-smoked cigars. Oh. The Lone Ranger showed them to me. They were the same brand as the one that we found near the safe after Durkin had robbed the Cheyenne Bank. Then the Lone Ranger must be on Durkin's trail. That afternoon, while the sheriff rode south on the return trip to Fairview, the Lone Ranger and Tonto guided their horses through the Laramie Mountains, about 30 miles west of Cheyenne. They traveled slowly, following hoof marks that were barely discernible until the masked man suddenly drew rein and said, Oh, Silver, oh, rain, Tonto. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, he's got a big trouble. Yep, here's another cigar. You must have it. You hear that? Yes, 
There's a horse just ahead of us around the bend. Easy, steady, big fella. Oh, Silver! Silver leaped ahead like an arrow from a bow. The Lone Ranger rounded the bend well in advance of Tonto. And at last, after many days of following the trail, saw Dial Durkin. The outlaw looked over his shoulder, recognized the masked man, and spurred his horse cruelly. While riding at breakneck speed, Durkin opened fire. Come on, Silver! The Lone Ranger leaned low and kept his guns holstered. Durkin fired again in desperation as the big white stallion gained rapidly. Keep firing, Durkin! Two more shots will empty your gun! I'll kill you! One more, Durkin! Durkin knew his freedom depended on the last shot in his gun and held his fire. Each second brought the Lone Ranger closer. He was within ten yards of the outlaw, and a moment later, less than five yards separated the straining horses. This is the end, Durkin! Durkin looked back, his face livid with rage. I'll kill you! As Durkin leveled his gun for another shot, the Lone Ranger fired. No! Durkin's gun was smashed by the masked man's bullet. Oh, we'll close in! Come on, Silver! An added burst of speed brought Silver alongside the outlaw's horse. Bring him around, shoot! Now, yeah, hold your fire! Hold, hold it! Hold it! Hold it! My hands are up. What are you going to do with me? I'm going to turn you over to Marshal Green in Cheyenne. It was after dark when Marshal Green took charge of Durkin, locked him in a cell, then joined the masked man and Tonto as they prepared to mount their horses behind the jail. Well, once more, I'm indebted to you, and so is the bank for the recovery of the cash Dial Durkin stole. All but a hundred dollars of it was in his saddlebags. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Now, with all that cash in his possession, I can't see why Durkin was planning another bank job. Was he planning another? Sure, the one in Fairview. You know about that one. No, I don't, Marshal. You must know about it. You wrote and told Sheriff Neely that Durkin planned to rob the Fairview Bank on the 15th of this month. I saw the letter. A letter I wrote? Yes, Sheriff Neely's a friend of mine. He was here in Cheyenne today with a letter signed by the Lone Ranger. No, I didn't write it. I'd like to know who did. So would I. And I'm going to try to find out. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. I'd appreciate it if you'd keep secret the fact that Durkin's in jail... At least don't tell Sheriff Neely. Right. Adios. Easy Adios. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come A few days later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto camped in a woods near Fairview. And each day after that, Tonto went into town. He remained as unobtrusive as the other Indians in the community. He spent most of his time seated on the steps of the sheriff's office. While pretending to doze, he remained alert, but heard nothing of importance. Meanwhile, John Carmody, the banker, rode out of town one evening. He traveled by a devious route to a small cabin. There, he conferred with a short, heavily built man. We'll carry out the plans just as we made them. You arrive in Fairview by stagecoach on the 14th. Pose him as your Uncle Ben. Right. I'll leave a small safe in the bank unlocked, and the $2,000 in paper money will be there waiting for you. Carmody, I want more money. You want more? More? Yeah, you've stolen around 20000 By letting me steal two, you'll be able to report a loss of twenty-two, and you'll be in the clear. Why, we we agreed on 2000 That was before I learned the bank examiners are due to show up in a couple of weeks. You're in a bad spot, Carmody. Unless you can cover what you stole, you'll lose everything and go to jail besides. Then you're not taking any risk. Dial Durkin will be blamed for the robbery. My price is 5000 Pay it or go to jail for embezzlement. Well, I... I'll pay. Uh, you're smart. Where will the law be on the night of the robbery? Fifteen miles from town at a place known as Tall Pines. You'll go there expecting to meet the Lone Ranger. Mm, I suppose you've written another letter for him and signed it, the Lone Ranger. Yes, yes. Here it is, Benny. Mail it. I mailed the last one in Cheyenne. Where will I mail this one? In Boone City, where you'll board the stagecoach. I wanted to arrive with the mail on the stage that brings you. Right, Carmody. Um... Your old Uncle Ben will be on that stagecoach, oh, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Each evening, Tonto reported to the Lone Ranger in the camp near Fairview, and each day found the Indian in his familiar place, 
on the steps of the sheriff's office. He was there on the afternoon of the 14th when the stagecoach arrived. Toto joined the sheriff, banker Carmody, and others on the station platform to watch the arriving stagecoach. He saw the driver toss down a small packet of mail and heard the deputy sheriff say, Sheriff, I'll see if any of that mail's for us. All right, Hank. There was just one passenger aboard the stagecoach, a short, heavily built man, to whom banker Carmody called, well, Uncle Ben, hello there. Hi, nephew. Oh, sheriff, this is my Uncle Ben Carmody. Howdy. Welcome to Fairview. Thanks, thanks. Glad to know you, Sheriff. Uh, here's your bag, Mr. Carmody. Thanks, driver. I'll take it. Well, what time do you leave here? Six o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be on hand. Don't leave without me. <laughs> I'll be looking for you. Uncle Ben, why don't you stay in Fairview for a while? There'll be another westbound stage next week. No, thanks, nephew. I hanker to reach the coast as soon as possible. Now, uh, let's go to your place. It's right across the street next door to the bank. See you later, Sheriff. Right. So long, Sheriff. Hey, Sheriff. Oh, yes, hey. Any mail for me? Yeah, one letter. It's from Boone City. Hmm. Wonder who it's from. I don't know anyone in Boone City. Yeah, neither do I. I... Hank, hey, it's signed the same as that other letter. It's from the Lone Ranger. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, the cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats, the good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. As the sheriff read the letters signed the Lone Ranger, he lowered his voice... But Tonto, by shifting his position slightly, could hear the lawman saying, He says, I'll help you set a trap to catch Dial Durkin if you meet me at 11 o'clock on the night of the 14th at Tall Pine. The 14th? That's tonight. That's right. Are you going to Tall Pine? You bet I am. Early that evening, Tonto joined the Lone Ranger in camp and told about the arrival of the man from the east and the sheriff's receipt of the second fraudulent letter. The Lone Ranger listened carefully, then said, We'll be there early, Toto. Maybe we'll find the man who's writing letters and signing them the Lone Ranger. The familiar landmark known as Tall Pine rose from the top of the hill. Near the base of the old tree, a number of big boulders provided concealment for the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and their horses. The masked man and the Indian waited over an hour in the darkness. Then, at 11 o'clock, they heard a horse approaching. You must tell me, yes. someone come. It's too dark to see whether it's the sheriff or someone else. Uh, damn, there's no moon tonight. Yes. Whoa, whoa there. That sheriff's boy. All right, stay here with the horses, Tonto. I'll talk to him. Sir. Uh, yeah? Where are you? Here. I've been waiting for you. Oh, behind that rock. Yes. I reckon you're the Lone Ranger. My Juniper, I sure been looking forward to meeting you. Got your letters. Sir, uh, I haven't written any letters to you. You haven't? But I got two of them. Say, are you the Lone Ranger? Yes. Well, if you didn't write to me, why are you here? I heard about both of the letters you received and came here in the hope of finding out who wrote them. Moreover, I wanted to tell you that Dial Durkin is in the Cheyenne jail. He is. I wonder why Marshal Green didn't tell me. 
Durkin was jailed after your visit to the marshals. I don't savvy. Why would anyone write me letters like that? That's what I'd like to know. If Durkin's in the Cheyenne jail, he can't very well rob the bank in Fairview. No, but someone else can. Huh? Someone who wants Durkin to be blamed for the robbery. Why, Juniper, you're right. But hold on. Why did that mysterious letter writer tell me to come here tonight? I can think of one good reason. Why? To get you out of town. For what? While the bank is being robbed. Well, if that's what the critter handed mine, he's due for a surprise. I suspected something of that sort and left the deputy on guard. Just the same, I'd better get back to town as soon as possible. I don't know, I'll go with you. It was long after midnight when the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Sheriff Neely reached Fairview. They turned into one end of the main street and saw a crowd of people and a number of torchlights and lanterns in the street, some distance away. Wait, ran in. Oh, oh, oh. Something's going on. Ah, crowd in front of the bank. That's right. Maybe the robbery. I'm not going there, Sheriff. My mask would cause too many questions. But if the bank's been robbed... I'll stay out of sight behind the building. I'll learn what's happened. You better go on alone. What about Tonto? He'll join the crowd after you're there. Whatever you say. Get up there. Come on. As he rode, the sheriff looked back and saw the Lone Ranger guiding his horse toward the rear of the row of buildings on the same side of the main street as the bank. Then the lawman looked ahead. Banker Carmody and the deputy stood in the crowd near the bank door. Seeing the sheriff, the deputy cried out, Here's the sheriff now. Well, it's about time. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Neely, where have you been? I had business out of town. Fine thing. The bank's been robbed. The bank was slugged. And Dial Durkin did it. Now, hold on, all of you. True, sheriff. The ornery polecat got away with it. How long ago? Less than half an hour ago. I left you on guard, Hank. How did it happen? That rat it, Sheriff. I don't know. I kept going around the building as you told me to, checking first the front door, then the back. And... About a good, that did. Well, someone must have crept close behind me somehow and cracked me on the head. I remember seeing stars, and next thing I knew, I was lying on the ground near the back door. And the bank, it was throwing water on me. How'd you find it, Mr. Carmody? Very simple. After my uncle went to bed, I went to the cafe across the street for an hour. As I came out, I noticed a dim light inside the bank. Very cautiously, I unlocked the front door. And then I saw a man crouched in front of the open safe. By the light of a candle placed on the floor, he was putting money into a cloth sack. And, Sheriff, he was smoking a cigar. Quiet, Hank. Let Mr. Carmody finish. Well, the thief saw me, fired once, and ran out the back door, which was wide open. He went straight to the woods about 100 yards behind the bank. He had a horse hidden there. I heard him right away. Then near the door, I saw your deputy on the ground, tied, gagged, and blindfolded. The thief is a tall, thin man, and he unlocked the safe by dialing the combination. And we found the cigar he was smoking. He must be Dial Durkin. Later that night, Toto joined the Lone Ranger in the woods and reported all that Carmody and the deputy had told the sheriff. The Lone Ranger said, There must be tracks we can follow, Tonto, but there's little we can do until dawn. Me tell Sheriff? Yes. Tell him we're going to try to follow the tracks of the thief at daybreak, and we'd be glad to have him with us. The stagecoach left town at daybreak with one passenger. And a few minutes later, the sheriff and his deputy joined the Lone Ranger and Tonto at the edge of the woods. Oh, 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 I sure hope we can find the tracks of that thief. According to Carmody, he ran here in a straight line from the back door of the bank. That's right. And he had a horse waiting here. Several townsmen heard him right away. And here are the tracks of the horse. But sure enough. And here, where him run from bank. Yeah, I see the tracks. The ground here in the woods is softer and isn't open. These footprints were made by low-heeled shoes, such as an Easterner might wear. Him plenty heavy man. Notice the length of his stride. No tall man would take such a short stride. Carmody said he was tall and lean. Then Carmody's eyes were playing tricks. The man who made these footprints is short and heavy. He wore low-heeled shoes. Kimasabe, that sounds like Banker's Uncle Ben. It sure does. You describe him to a team. He's the man we want to talk to. It's too late. He's gone. Gone where? He left town a few minutes ago on the westbound stage. Well, I'm going after him. But, mister, you can't... said anything for us. Sheriff, look at that masked man travel. Well, don't stand there looking at him. we got to follow him. Right. Did he he said it, boy. Oh, he's oh, he got him up. Just count. Wow. 
Riding like the wind, the Lone Ranger dashed along the stage trail, far in advance of Tonto and the two lawmen. Monsieur! A guard riding beside the driver of the stage looked back, then shouted, We're being chased by a masked man! An outlaw! Get up! Get up there! Hold up and fire on the critic! Did you get him? Oh, he's too far back! The banker's uncle, he's open fire. I'll get the pole cat. What happened? Uncle Ben's hit the gun head. Bring him up that stage. Up that stage, you'll open fire. All right, I'm stopping. Whoa, oh, there. Oh, oh, he's heading. Don't shoot, mister. I'm not going to shoot, but keep your hands up. We got nothing worth stealing. It's your passenger I'm after. Easy, steady, big fella. Ornery pole cat, you busted my hand. Get out of that stage. What do you want of me? The money you took from the bank. Who says I took any money? Come on out. Oh, you wait. You'll be jailed for this. The sheriff's on his way. Make your complaints to him. Hey, he's right. Here comes the sheriff and his deputy. And the engine. Let's see how old you really are. Oh, uh, look out. A wig. Hey, uh, the old man. Well, he's not an old man. Why are you wondering? Let's see how much cash you're carrying. Oh, 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 sheriff. Sheriff, this masked man's trying to rob me. I doubt that. What's the idea of wearing a wig? Look at this, Sheriff. Give me that. That's my money. Brand new paper money. Looks like we've got you for robbing a bank. Your footprints will convict you. My footprints? Yes, your footprints. Oh, that fool and his slick plans. Well, listen, I'm not going to jail. I'll talk. I'll turn state's evidence. I'll tell you where to find the crook who stole four times as much as I did. Get Banker Carmody. He's your real crook. Banker Carmody? Is he the one who wrote letters and signed them, the Lone Ranger? Yes, he stole from the bank and lost the money with bad investments. He hired me to cover for him before the bank examiners came. Well, sir, now it's up to you. Yep, we'll take it from here, mister. Hello, we'll be on our way. Goodbye. Adios. 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 Come on, get him up. Come. Sheriff, I thought that hombre was a highwayman. Highwayman? Oh, no, driver. He's the Lone Ranger. of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.